Hi, my name is Laura Giordana, and today I'll be walking you through how to use Nutanix objects once an object store has been created. We will create buckets and access credentials so that your S3 compatible applications can access the object store. So I'll start by creating a bucket directly from Prism Central, where we can easily see the types of policies that can be applied to a bucket. So from within the objects UI, we can drill down into our object store that we've created, and we can click on Create Bucket. Here's where we're able to specify versioning, and this will allow us to protect our objects if the object is overwritten or accidentally deleted. Those previous versions will persist in the system. We can specify to only keep versions up to a specific date, or you can leave this unchecked and it will keep all the versions. Versioning is also helpful if you want to upload new versions of the same object for required changes, but you also want to preserve the original data. We can also set lifecycle policies, which will determine when current objects should be expired from the system. Once the bucket has been created, we can then define a WORM policy. WORM stands for Write Once, Read Many, and is helpful for when your data needs to comply with certain regulations that prevents the data from being tampered with, changed, or deleted for a specified period of time. This is important for industries such as finance, legal, or healthcare, that require the data comply with strict regulations dictating requirements such as the minimum length of time for which data has to be available, or the data be stored in such a way that it can't be altered by anyone or anything. We can also generate keys for users or service accounts so that they can create and share their own buckets. From the main object UI, click on Access Keys and click on Add People. You can either select an Active Directory or LDAP group so you can generate individual keys for each user in a group, or you can create a single key by entering an email address of a user. Once we have generated a key pair, we can use this key pair to log into the object store using S3, any S3 compatible application, for example, Cyberduck. Once I've downloaded the keys, I can open them and I'm able to use them to connect to a, my object store using an S3 compatible application such as Cyberduck. All we need to do is select the S3 protocol when making the connection and use the client access IP that we specified when creating the object store. And that can be found on the objects UI under client used IPs. I can then enter in the username or the access credentials that we've just generated. And now this user is able to connect to the object store and create their own buckets and upload files into it. From the object UI, we can also see from here the bucket that that user has created with the single object inside. We can also share buckets. So first we'll create a second user. Now, if we download the keys for this user and we try to connect to that same object store in that same bucket, let's see what happens. So he can also connect to the object store, but if he tries to connect to Jim's bucket, he'll get an access denied error. 
So now either the owner of this bucket or the PRISM admin can share out this bucket. So from PRISM, we can actually click on the bucket and give Dwight read access. You can click share. You can see it's owned by Jim here. He has read and write access. And now we can add Dwight. Now if we go back and try to access the bucket using that same account, he should now be able to see the files that are in Jim's bucket. But if he tries to upload anything, he'll get an access denied error. So all we need to do is go back to the sharing settings and give him write access. Click try again and the upload will go through. So now we can see that Jim's bucket now has two objects in it and Dwight and Jim are both able to read and write to that bucket.